Hello and welcome, I'm Maria from Sew Through Time and this week we're making a muskrat muff. Now I know a lot of people have opinions about fur, whether it's faux fur or real fur, vintage or new, there are lots of opinions on that and I'm not going to go into that in this. And what I'm using is a vintage fur coat, one of those generic kind of 70s, 80s kind that isn't worth much and it was already partly broken so I had some leftover bits from a previous project and I decided to use that for this muff. If you're going to use some vintage fur for whatever you're creating I would suggest first doing a little research on the item and making sure that it's not something valuable that should be preserved as is. I used the hem of the coat and I cut a big rec rectangle out of that. I wanted it to be fairly large, but not one of those huge ones that was more popular in the 1790s because I wanted to, this to work for the 1780s, 90s, and Regency era. Looking at fashion plates, muffs tend to be throughout this time period larger than you necessarily need to warm your hands. And because I didn't bother to cut this into smaller pieces, but just made a huge rectangle, there is some weirdness with the direction of the fur. That's part of the fur goes in the straight of the fur's line, and then part of it goes kind of diagonally. But because I don't think that it really matters in a muff, it's not going to affect it. It's not draping in any way, so I just didn't care. For the lining, I'm using a silk dupioni from my stash. It is too slubby to be in any way accurate for the time period, but since it barely shows, it doesn't really matter that much. There are a few existing slubby gowns from the 18th century, but they are a little bit of a different texture than a dupioni. But as a good rule of thumb, in the 18th century, try to stick with silks that don't have slubs to them. Before machine-made fabrics and man-made fibers, fabric was valued by how smooth and perfect it is. Those kind of things like slubs in silk were considered lower quality. They weren't valued until man-made fibers could be produced in a way that they could be made easily to look perfect. So then to show that it's actually a natural product, people started desiring slubs. Now when sewing through leather, you really want to use a thicker thread. I'm using a silk twist. And you want to keep your stitches further apart from each other, kind of big slubby stitches, because every time you pierce that leather, it weakens a little bit. So especially when working with vintage fur, it will break if you make your stitches too close together. And another note that if you are used to sewing without a thimble. When working with leather, I really suggest that you learn to use a thimble because it will be really hard on your hands otherwise. When sewing through leather, I actually prefer using a sharp small needle to an actual leather needle. The only time in this entire project when you really need to keep your stitches even and really close together is when you sew that lining onto that cotton tape that is attached to the fur because that's where the feathers inside the stuffing will work their way out through if those stitches aren't really close together. When making a muff, you always want to stuff it with something. Usually in the 18th century, they are stuffed with feathers or wool. Okay, now absolutely everything is covered in feathers. And I'm actually surprised how much feathers this thing took. I had like a little under a half a pillow left from my split rump. And I mean, that's big, but this took the rest of the pillow. because my silk isn't very like tightly woven, there are some feathers that work their way through. So if you use anything that isn't really a super tightly woven fabric, use an interlining between the feathers and the silk. 
hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll see you again next week. Bye!